let's take a look at an indirect cash flow example. So here we have some balance sheet information with our assets, our liabilities, and our equity. And we also have some additional information here at the bottom. This is typical of what you'll see for an indirect cash flow problem. Now, I have a template over here. Keep in mind we have three sections on our statement of cash flows. First, the operating section. This is where all of our regular day-to-day -day activities are going to be recorded, as well as any adjustments to net income. Our cash flows from investing activities. One second. Investing. And our cash flows from financing activities. Now, for each of these areas, we are going to be analyzing this information over to on the left hand side and inputting it appropriately. Now keep in mind there are also a few other cheats as we go through. Uh, these have to do with the operating section so I'll get to those as we pretty much hit all of those areas. So first off, there's a certain order that I like to go through but please be feel free to come up with your own order if there's something that works better for you. So I actually like to start at the very bottom with cash just because it's nice because it's there and it's easy and we can put something in and get started and feel confident. So the first is the increase slash decrease in cash. Now I see that there was a decrease of 6,000 during the year, so I'm going to put that $6,000 in right away. Now keep in mind, this is a decrease, it's a negative, so I'm going to put that in as a negative. Now cash at the beginning of the year was 50,000. Keep in mind that the end of last year will be the beginning of this year. And we have our cash at the end of the year of 44,000 there for our current year. Next, I like to put in our net income. Now keep in mind, some templates like it in the left-hand column, some like it in the middle column. Here, I'm going to put it in the middle column. Now, you might notice that there's no net income here. And why is that? This is a balance sheet. Net income will only appear on our income statement. So let's move down and let's take a look here at F. There was a 38,300 credit to retained earnings for net income. So let's grab that 38,300 credit to retained earnings for net income. And let's plug that in for our net income for this problem. Keep in mind, net income also, if they didn't provide you with this information down here, and they didn't provide you with an income statement, another area you might actually be able to find this is on the retained earnings statement. Okay, so now that I have my net income, Let's move on to other areas in our operating section. Now this is going to be our current assets and current liabilities. So keep in mind current assets are going to do the opposite. So if current assets are going up, we will decrease. And if current assets are going down, we will increase. Now current liabilities follow the same direction. So if current liabilities are going up, we will increase. And if current liabilities are going down, we will decrease. And if this doesn't make sense now, just wait a moment and we'll go ahead and give you an example of how this works here. So let's take a look at cash. Cash, we actually already handled that, so we do not want to analyze that current asset. So accounts receivable, the, yes, this is a current asset, so let's take a look at that change. Here we see that it went from $1,000 to $2,000, so it was a positive $1,000 change. So current assets went up. So if current assets go up, we need to decrease. So I'm going to go to the deduct line and I'm going to write increase in accounts receivable and place that change there. Next, let's move on to our next line, supplies. That is also a current asset, so let's take a look at what it did. Supplies decreased during the year by $400, so if current assets decrease, we need to increase them, add them. So let's go ahead and add them here. So we have an increase, whoop, decrease in supplies. Of $400. Next we have investments. Now keep in mind investments is not a current assets here. So let's move on to our current liabilities. Accounts payable, that is a current liability, and it decreased during the year. So if current liabilities go down, we deduct them. So let's go ahead and deduct those. Decrease in accounts payable will be 1,000. 
and onto our accrued expenses. These are also a current liability. So let's see what happened here. They increased. And remember, it follows the same direction as the change. So if that went up, we have to add it. So increase in accrued expenses, adding $500, good. Now, dividends payable is interesting. It is typically a current liability, but the only issue here is it doesn't go in our operating section. Now, operating activities is everything that happens from day to day. However, dividends is actually a financing activity, so we're going to hold off on doing anything with dividends right now. Now, everything else here, these are all equity, so let's start looking at our additional information next. Now, it tells us that the investments were sold for 95000 cash. Now, when you see these, be careful because it's a two-step process. First off, we know that it's an investment, so it's going to go in our investing activities. Keep in mind, investing activities will have everything to do with property, plant, and equipment, as well as other investments. So here, if we sold the investments, we were receiving cash. So our cash is going up, so that would be an ad. Now, there's two steps here. We have to record in the investing section how much cash we received. So we received $95,000 cash. However, the second step of this actually has to do with our operating section. Now, whenever we have a gain or loss on a sale, we record that gain or loss in the operating section. And this is because net income already has this information embedded in it. So whenever we have a gain, we would have increased net income. And whenever we had a loss, we would have decreased net income. Now we want to kind of do the opposite to remove those effects. So let's take a look at this little acronym over here. We have net income plus depreciation expense plus losses minus gains. Now there's a fun little way of remembering this little mnemonic for what you're going to do over here in the operating section. And we like to use nobody in Detroit likes gangrene. Um, so let's take a look at here. We have net income up at the top. Good. We will find depreciation later. And then we have losses. Remember that's likes, so it's positive. And we have gangrene, that's bad, so it's negative. Those are our gains. So nobody in Detroit likes gangrene. So positive, 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 then gangrene, negative. So let's take a look at that gain. We received $95,000 cash. However, those investments were only worth $70,000. So we actually have a $25,000 gain. So what do we do with gains? We subtract them. So let's go here to our deduct, and we'll put in gain on sale of investments for $25,000. There, now you have dealt with your investment section. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. Uh, equipment and land were purchased for cash. So remember, all PPE, property, plate, and equipment, is going to go in the investing section. So let's move on to our investing with the purchase of equipment and the purchase of land. Now keep in mind when we purchase something, we are giving out cash. Well, typically if we're purchasing it with cash, so cash is going down. So let's deduct the money we spent on those two purchases. So we have purchase of equipment and purchase of land. So let's take a look at how much we spent on that equipment. Equipment, we purchased 56,000. There was an increase of 56,000. That represents the purchase there. Now keep in mind, if we had a disposal, this might change. It might make it more difficult. In this case, we do not have a disposal, so it is not too hard. And by the way, the disposal is here in C. Now let's take a look at our land. How much do we spend on land? $60,000, so we can put that right in. Okay. Right, so B is done. Now let's take a look at C. C tells us that there were no disposals of equipment during the year. Now there's actually a really important reason why they're telling us this. One, it tells us that the increase in equipment is the purchase price. And also it tells us that the increase in accumulated depreciation is the depreciation expense for the year. And remember, for our nobody in Detroit likes gangrene, 
it's net income, depreciation expense, losses and gains. So we need to find that depreciation expense. So here, when there's no disposals of equipment, the increase in accumulated depreciation is exactly the amount of the increase. So it's that 8,000. Now keep in mind this little cheat right here, this has to do with operating. So that depreciation expense is going to be an add in our operating section. Keep in mind, this is an accumulated depreciation. This is depreciation expense, two different accounts. Just because of this uh, one here in C, just because there were no disposals of equipment during the year, that's the only reason why it equals the change in accumulated depreciation. Okay, next let's take a look at the stock that was issued for cash. Remember, there are two things going on here, common stock and paid in capital. So these are the two amounts that are being changed whenever we issue stock. So we actually have a twofold one here that we're going to add together. And remember, whenever we issue stock or borrow money, that is financing. So let's add the proceeds from that sale of stock. Whoop, not sale of stock, sorry, issuance of stock. And that is a total of $45,000. Okay, for E, retained earnings was debited for $50,000 for dividends declared. This is an important word here. When we're doing our cash flow statement, we're concerned with cash dividends paid, not cash dividends declared. So this is when we have to go back to our dividends payable and play around a little bit. Now. When it comes to dividends, we know that there are a few things that are being changed whenever we declare something and pay something. So let's think about dividends payable for a second. We started with $700 in the account. Now, cash dividends payable is increased by any declarations of dividends. So if we declared 50,000 in dividends but didn't pay anything at all during the year, we would have an ending balance of 50700 However, we did pay something, and we know that because the dividends payable balance decreased. It's not 50700 it's only 500 left that we owe. So we can find the amount that we paid by subtracting that beginning amount. Sorry, that ending, <laughs> that ending balance that we have there. So that's $50,200 that we actually paid. So keep in mind, Think of this formula, beginning dividends payable plus dividends declared minus your ending dividends payable balance will equal your dividends paid. So let's plug that 50,200 here, dividends paid. Okay, so that covered our dividends payable. That covered all of E. We've actually already covered F and all E and F really is all we have to do with retained earnings. So we're actually done in putting information on here for this section. Now let's take a look at everything and let's sum it up. So keep in mind for your deducts, if you're someone who gets a little uh, scatterbrained sometimes with all these numbers, you might want to put these in brackets if you're comfortable with it just because it will remind you that these are going to be subtractions. So let's go ahead and add everything up for now and then we'll demonstrate that later. So we have 400 plus 500 plus 800. And for our deductions in the operating section, we have 1,000 plus 1,000 plus 25,000. Now for our sale of investments, that one's easy. We have one addition. And we actually have two deductions. Now let's do the same thing over here for our issuance of stock. We just have the 45,000 increase and the 50,200 decrease. Now let's find our net cash flows from operating activities. We have three numbers here. Now we're netting them, remember, and this is why I say you might want to use brackets. Net income is a positive, your ads are a positive, but your deducts are negative. So if you put that in uh, parentheses, it might actually help you remember that you're deducting that number. Okay. Same here for the net cash flows from investing activities. We have an increase and a decrease. And the same thing over here, increase and a decrease. Now let's check. And everything works out. 
Good job. You just completed an indirect cash flow statement. Have a wonderful day.